G'day everyone, Tim from Bozzy Garage and today we are heading to the Electric SUV Exposition in Melbourne. Starting off here with a Polestar 4. This one's famous for having no rear window as you can see in the back there. Is it going to be a problem? Oh, I don't know. Apparently there are cameras that will work to keep it uh, keep it visibly okay from the back. Yeah, okay, no rear window at all. Reasonable boot space. Polestar, they make beautiful interiors though. Fabric or wool, I think. This one here is interesting. It's kind of like a SUV coupe. It's got a very long interior space, which is really, really good for the back seat. I uh, wasn't able to open the back to see how big the boot space is. Heaps of legroom. I can stretch out and not touch the street, the seat in front. Flat floor, of course. Not an, not a petrol car version. Quite impressive. A pre-facelift Tesla Model 3. Clearly on airbags. Check out the suspension details going on in the front. Large air cylinder, a couple of compressors there too, and it is dumped. Yeah, good job. Guess who we ran into? This is Nish. Hi, Nish. Hey guys, how are you? So, where are you from, Nish? Well, I'm based in Sydney, yeah. and uh, oh. yeah, just flew in for the day and uh, trying to see if I can uh, meet some people. And if you are in the MG4 community, just come and say hi. Yeah, check it out. So, Nish and Alec, both sponsors of the MG4 Owners Australia Facebook group, make sure you go and check them out. EVtrove.com. EVtrove.com. Nice. And what we have here is the Kia stand. They've got a few new cars coming through, actually. Looks like we've got an EV6, which is a model which has been out in the Australian model for quite a while already. And a couple of their new EV9s, which are pretty imposing cars. Definitely in the large vehicle segment. This one's got this amazing matte blue paint. Looks fantastic, I've got to say. I uh, hope you've got a full-time cleaner to keep it nice and neat. And a sort of khaki green... Oh, actually, I thought this was an EV9. It's a Sorento. Uh, it's got a disgusting petrol engine in there, but there's a bit of battery work going on, so I guess we'll forgive it. Very imposing cars. Quite large. Mm, I'd say <laughs> Range Rover dimension. Maybe that's a benchmark we can use. Matte paint. Mm, no fingerprints with my grubby fingers on it. Pop-out door handles. Nice, beautiful white leather interior, and hopefully a really big boot. What's the massage function? <laughs> EV6 been around for a while. I've not actually driven one of these yet, but uh, apparently quite sporty. Again, matte grey paint. Pop out handles just like a Tesla Model 3. Oh, fantastic. An actual sunroof that actually opens. <laughs> New electric Mini. Moving away from the round headlights that we've seen in all Minis up to now. We'll see if that's a success or not. Kind of reminds me of a Suzuki. I think a Suzuki Swift has got that kind of hexagonal headlight. This is the, I believe, four-wheel drive version. A little bit bigger than the smaller Mini. Mm, cool pixelated head, uh, tail lights too. Yeah, nice design feature. Let's have a look in the back of this one here. Hmm, I like that. Decent sized boot. Bigger than a small car, bigger than a Corolla or i30 boot I would say, but not by much. Nice. And of course the traditional circle and center dash. Now, GWM. The only electric car I know from them is the Aura Cat. These are hybrids from the look of them. At least as far as I can tell from the number plate. Massive car. Uh, what size category is that? Oh, Land Cruiser size, I think, that one. And uh, a Ute. Uh, 
decently modern interior. It's like an iPad stuck to the dash, like all <laughs> all EVs, I guess. Decent quality, from what I can feel. And now Xpeng. Now, first time I've ever seen an Xpeng in the flesh. These are a huge manufacturer in China. And apparently they've got a range of vehicles ready to launch here in Australia. This looks like a MPV style. Let's call it Kia Carnival size. Beautiful looking seats there in the middle. Yeah, definitely good if you've got a big family. Looks like you can seat about 10 people maybe. Three in the back, two in the middle, two in the front, that's uh, seven all up. Still got a little bit of boot space even with all the seats used and of course you'll have a lot more with the back seats folded down. Now, this crazy looking thing here is apparently an electric car. I don't know how. I can see, oh, carbon, carbon fiber blades on it. Well, I mean, the indication is it can fly. I don't see where the wheels are. An electric personal vehicle, I guess you could call it. Pretty incredible stuff. I mean, this is really what they were talking about 20 years ago when they were talking about cars of the future. Self-driving cars, electric cars, all that sort of stuff. Flying cars. Another X-Pen here, mm, medium, medium to large size sedan. Looks a bit longer than a Model 3, maybe a little bit closer towards a Model S. Uh, gull wing doors, of course. Full width front headlight, this is a P7, if, <laughs> if the number plate is correct. 19 inch wheels. Uh, those doors, she's struggling with them a little bit. There's probably a button that you push to close them, I would suspect. How do we open them? Out. Mm, struggle with the door handle a little bit. Give it a lift. Uh, hopefully it doesn't break when you get into that. <laughs> and yet another X-Peng. I guess this is called the SUV show, so there should be more SUVs here. This is, uh, you know, I like to compare cars to other car sizes. I would say mid mid-size, maybe Mazda CX-5, CX-9 size roughly. Anything different here? Fairly conventional now, I guess, the design of electric cars. A lot of the new ones, apart from Tesla's, will have the center uh, screen for the driver. We've got two, read that, two, one, two screens on the side. Uh, the one on the very far side is actually active. Um, yeah, so a lot of stuff to look at. There might be a little touch screen in the middle there, it's a little bit hard to tell. Let's have a look in the back. Mm -hmm. We've got a charger, we've got a compressor, terracotta style leather, although it's probably fake leather, vegan, plastic, whatever you want to call it. Looks nice enough. Dark tinted windows. Yeah, Xpeng G9. And if we're following the naming convention, there's a G6, which is probably going to be three sizes smaller than a G9. It, again, a trend seems to be the rear light bar that crosses across the entire boot lid. It's called the Heckensplend, I think I looked up in another video. Nice feeling interior. This feels a lot like the interior of my Model 3. Perforated seats, might be ventilated, maybe even heated. Good quality from what I can tell. Plenty of legroom as is the standard now and a flat floor in the rear. Rear seats seem to fold fairly flat too. Full glass roof, doesn't look like it opens. Good looking car, I do like the, uh, the light bar that goes right the way across. I think some of the new Hyundai's like the Kona also have a very similar design feature. The actual headlights are there, those are only DRLs that run across the top. Still, cool looking thing and daylight running lamps, much more safer for driving on the road too. Another Chinese manufacturer that we're seeing here, this is Zika. I believe the parent company is Volvo or maybe they're the parent company of Volvo, I'm not quite sure. Before I bought the MG4, I was actually going to put a deposit down on a Volvo EX30, but they couldn't deliver it in time. They couldn't tell me how much it was going to be. Um, but this is apparently the twin under the skin of the EX30, a small size, uh, city size SUV, I guess you could call it. Again, we've got some nice daylight running lamp features up there. Actual headlights will be down lower down. A green car <laughs> in both color and form. Yeah, it's an old joke, I'm sorry. Does it look good? I think so. We've got a nice thick rear pillar, again shared with the Volvo EX30, charge port location, 
back left hand side which again same as the uh, MG4 as same as the Model 3 seems to be the default nowadays interesting door handle soft touched cool detailing on the back of the seat there yep nice feeling faux leather small seat uh, yeah I'd say it's about as wide as an MG4 on the inside Play. heads up display Beauty of this comes, it moves with the steering wheel, so it's always in the perfect spot for you as well. Yep. Keep on talking, explaining. So little things like this is your, that's your door release. What, what, what do you mean? So when I shut the door, you press that, that unlocks it. That unlocks it, do you mean? Unlocks it. Unlocks it. Yeah. So I'll close the door, and you just press that, then you went to push the door open. Uh, our brand is one of the got a couple of Toyotas. Interesting because Toyota have typically been the most anti-EV of all the manufacturers but they have grudgingly put out a car it's called the BZ4X which is also a Subaru Sold Terror I think. A couple of unpainted panels by design there on the front. Let's have a bit of a closer look around. I, I don't know what to think. Toyotas to me have always been a bit of an old man's car. I know they make the Super Slash BMW, I know they make the Corolla GRs, uh, the rest of it, sport cars, but never really been something I've been into myself. All electric. Nice deep boot. The hatch configuration, of course, is something very useful to see. Let's have a look on the inside here. Hmm. Yeah, there's something about Toyota. It's like, it, it just feels old, older than what it should be. This looks like Battlestar Galactica from the 1980s with this big, chunky, molded, plasticky thing. And, uh, honestly, pretty, pretty low cost buttons going on there. That power button from a Camry from 10 years ago, I feel like, too. It's kind of cramped. This is massive, this center console here. You could probably fit another person in if you wanted to. The dash display is actually pretty cool. I like how it's integrated up there. But it, it, it kind of feels like an electric car if it was designed in 1984. What is this thing? It's a Hyundai. Look at the size of it. I don't know what it is, but uh, it's big. So it wouldn't be an EV show if we didn't have a couple of BYDs. This is the Dolphin. This has been out for a while. Uh, then one of the natural competitors in the very small EV market, as in small and compact, MG4, Dolphin, Aura Cat, uh, Mini, I guess, even though it's about double the price. And this one here, I think, is a new Sea Lion. What is it? Sea Lion. I think this is a hybrid. Pretty new. I have actually seen a few of them driving around Melbourne at the moment already, though. Black, great car to look at, horrible colour to own. Trust me on this, I've had a few black cars and it's great for 10 minutes when you've washed them, but then they get dirty. Let's have a look on the inside. The famous rotating tablet style 2 in the middle of the dash, I'd presume. I do like the detail here. Toggle switch to select your drive, reverse, park, etc. Two tone interior, uh, color scheme not to my liking, but I'm sure you can change it to something a little bit more uh, normal. <laughs> Big car. 
Hybrid's not my vehicle of choice, but I, I do see the the point for a lot of people who are worried about range. It does relieve a lot of the range anxiety. Not exactly an SUV, but uh, cool, whatever it is. Presumably electric. And I'm sure we remember not all that long ago there was some idiot politician who said, oh, EVs are going to ruin your weekend, they can't tow your boat, they can't tow your trailer, they can't take you to favourite camping spots. We all know that's bullshit, and this is proof. Here we go. We've got a Tesla Model Y towing a Sea-Doo. And what we have here is Ford reviving or maintaining the uh, Mustang badge and nameplate. There you go, there's a Mustang badge right there, I think you can see. But it's called the Mac E GT. Clearly, it is an electric car. It's got a pretty sporty looking front end, actually. In reality, it looks better than it does in photos. And of course, with a practical hatchback rear end, which, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't much like hatchbacks, but they are really what everything should be. Is that the door handle? Ah, clever. Nice sky blue colour, don't mind it at all. Massive boot opening, really nice. Plenty wide, almost a flat load lip here. Quite deep as well, not, not particularly high at this area here, just maybe 30, 40 centimetres or a foot or so, but still. Much more practical in the back of my Model 3. Looks great in white as well. And of course we are powered by Coke. <laughs> Not bad. I'm actually a little surprised that MG Australia don't have a stand here. They've uh, actually got quite a few EVs on the way. Uh, you might have seen my other video on the MG Cyberster. Have a look at my videos to uh, have a look at that reveal if you haven't seen it already. But you can always do it yourself. It, it looks complicated. Yeah, not, not lying. It looks complicated. Looks like we've still got a manual transmission, which is impressive too. Very impressive engineering, whoever came uh, up with this conversion here. LDV. Now, just like many of the Chinese manufacturers, I'm sure they have an association with a brand that we've actually heard of. That's not an engine, I don't think so. <laughs> so, LDV ET60, oh, it's only about a 100 grand drive away or so. Nice large utility twin cab. And over there we've also got a people, people mover style as well. Let's have a closer look at that one. Very popular in Asia, this uh, minivan style. Often you'll get the two main captain seats in the rear for extra comfort while someone chauffeurs you around. One of my favourite looking cars, the Hyundai Ioniq 5. This is the N version. Again, with a custom front end treatment, lots of fine details like the perforated or slotted grille there. Sort of a, not quite a matte paint, but definitely grey. Let's start them young. Massive wheels. These are what, 21 inch wheels? Very nice. Plenty of space in the back. Kind of an Alcantara feel as well. I don't know how to open that. <laughs> I found actually a lot of the cars here I've tried to open the boot and I couldn't figure out how. Love the illuminated N on the front seats. Uh, very similar to, I think, uh, BMW do that in their M models. Great looking car. Another Hyundai EV. This is the Kona. This is one that I was considering getting for Tina, actually, instead of the MG4. But I think the pricing ended up getting a little bit out of what I thought the car might be worth. I was thinking sort of 45 or so. I believe this is roughly 55 drive away, which is really in the realm of the Tesla Model Y, which 
oh, I've got to say it, Teslas make amazing cars and they have the best charging network and software update support that I know of so far. But if you like a more traditional kind of interior, we've got plenty of buttons in here for you to play with and you've actually got a shift dial or a shift knob or something there in the middle. The other thing that kind of annoyed me is that the Tesla has a stalk mounted uh, reverse parking whatever but it's exactly opposite here so for this Hyundai you've got to push it up to go into drive and then you've got to push it down to go into reverse again the opposite of Tesla I'm sure I'll get it wrong one day manage to reverse or drive into something that I don't mean to so it'd be nice if people would just agree on something for a change now Tina had a Hyundai i30 before the MG4 and honestly absolutely faultless we had it for 10 years from you never had a single problem with it um, so I think Hyundai's quality is amazing overall and hopefully it translates into the electric models as well. Quite sporty seats actually.